So let's talk a little bit about rational, rational numbers. Rational numbers. And the simple way to think about it is uh, uh, any number that can be represented as the ratio, as the ratio of two integers is a rational number. So for example, any integer is a rational number. One can be represented as one over one, or as negative two over negative two, or as 10,000 over 10,000. In all of these cases, these are all different representations of the number one ratio of two integers. And I actually obviously can have an infinite number of representations of one in this way, the same number over the same number. The number negative seven could be represented as negative seven over one, or seven over negative one, or negative 14 over positive two, and I could go on and on and on and on. So negative seven is definitely a rational number. It can be represented as the ratio of two integers. But what about things that are not integers? For example, let us imagine, oh, I don't know, let's imagine three, 3.75. How can we represent that as the ratio of two integers? Well, 3.75, you could, you could rewrite that as 375 over, over 100, which is the same thing as 750 over 200. Or you could say, hey, 3.75 is the same thing as 3 and 3 fourths as three and three fourths, so let me write here, three and three fourths, which is the same thing as, well, that's 15 over four. Four times three is 12, plus three is 15. So you could write this, this is the same thing as 15 over four, or we could write this as negative 30 over negative eight. I just multiplied the numerator and the denominator here by negative two. But just to be clear, this is clearly rational. I'm giving you multiple examples of how this can be represented as the ratio, as the ratio of two integers. Now what about repeating decimals? Well, let's take maybe the most famous of the repeating decimals. Let's say you have 0 0.333 just keeps going on and on forever, which we can denote by putting that little bar on top of the three. This is 0 0.3 repeating, and we've seen and later, we'll show that how you can convert any repeating decimal into a rational, in, 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 as the ratio of two integers. This is clearly 1 over 3. Or maybe you've seen things like 0 0.6 repeating, which is 2 over 3. And there's many, many, many other examples of this. And we'll see any repeating decimal, not just one digit repeating, as many, even if it has a, a million digits repeating, as long as the pattern starts to repeat itself over and over and over again, you can always represent that as the ratio, as the ratio of two integers. So I know what you're probably thinking. Hey Sal, you, you've just included a lot. You've included all of the integers. You've included all of non-repeating decimals or you've, all, you, I, you've included all of finite non-repeating decimals, and you've also included repeating decimals. What is left? Are there any numbers that are not rational? And you're probably guessing that there are, otherwise people wouldn't have taken the trouble of trying to label these as rational. And it turns out, as you can imagine, that actually some of the most famous numbers in all of mathematics are not rational. And we call these numbers irrational, irrational. Irrational numbers, irrational numbers, irrational numbers. And I've listed just a few of the most noteworthy examples. Pi, the ratio of the circumference to, of the, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle is an irrational number. It, 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 it never terminates. It goes on and on and forever, and it never repeats. E, same thing, never terminates, never repeats. It comes out of uh, continuously compounding interest. It comes out of complex analysis. E shows up all over the place. Square root of two, irrational number. Phi, the golden ratio, irrational number. So these things that really just pop out of nature, many of these numbers are irrational. Now you might say, okay, you know, are these irrational? These are just kind of these special, these special kind of numbers. But maybe most numbers are rational, and you know, Sal's just picked out some special cases here. But the important thing to realize is they do seem exotic, and they are exotic in, in certain ways, but they aren't uncommon. It actually turns out that there is 
at, there is always an irrational number between any two rational numbers. And in that, well, we could go on and on. There's actually an infinite number. But, but there's at least one. And so that gives you an idea that it's, you can't really say that there are fewer irrational numbers than rational numbers. And in a future video, we'll prove that you give me, you give me two rational numbers, rational one, rational two, rational two, there's going to be at least one irrational number between those, which is a kind of a neat result because irrational numbers seem to be kind of exotic. Another way to think about it, I took square root of two, but you take the square root of any non-perfect square, you're going to end up with an irrational number. You take the sum of an irrational and a rational number, and we'll see this later on, we'll prove it to ourselves. The sum of an irrational and a rational is going to be irrational. The product of an irrational and a rational is going to be irrational. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of irrational numbers out there.